Hi everybody. Um, this is the other part where we're going to explain uh, the exercises on the pages you have already received. You remember that the first exercise was about the phoneme per, where we have got to identify the three allophones or realizations of it according to the words given to us from English. So we can ha we have to identify pe as being an aspirated, aspirated, and released. Uh, among these words here, we have to find the right phonem ph phonetic environment where we are going to identify those realizations. Of course, you remember that we explained these phonetic environments in here. We, I mean, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six environments here, and you were asked to put the check, you know, in the right place. Where can we talk about P being unaspirated? Is it initial here? Is it final here? Is it after S here? Is it before a consonant here? Or is it between two vowels and the next one is stressed here? Or between two vowels and the next one is not stressed here? Same thing for P which is aspirated, same thing for P which is unreleased. Now, just to make you see clearly what happens in these words, I mean, on page 2, we have got the words being rearranged in another way, because the words are being grouped together, because they uh, share the same common, you know, uh, phonetic environment. For example, pig, police. P here is initial. Now, when P is initial, automatically, as you know, as a rule in English, this P gets aspirated so this is the realization here now we're going to where are we going to put the check it's in here P, which is aspirated it could it should be initial here so here the check P aspirated because it is initial so the check is in here okay now, the words in here share the same phonetic environment once again. In all of them, P is final. Uh, don't pay attention to this E which is in here because it's not a sound. It's just a letter written, but it's not pronounced. So, which means that the last sound is P. So, in all these words, P is final. Now, when P is final, uh, how can we realize it? How can we pronounce it? Of course, we are going to pronounce it as unreleased. Now, we are going to put the check where it's final. This is the final position. It's going to be unreleased here. This, I mean, the check is going to be put in here. Okay. Now, the other uh, uh, group, we have got spoke, spirit, aspirate. We find that P is after S. When it is after S, where are we going? Well, okay, when it is after S, what realization are we going to give it? Is it aspirated or unaspirated or unreleased? Of course, we know it is unaspirated. Okay, so we have to put the check, okay, here in the first place. Now, collapse, apt, flipped. We, in all these words, P is before a consonant. Collapse, S after it, apt, T after it, flipped, T after it. In this context, what realization are we going to give to the phoneme P? Of course, it can be unreleased here. So it's going to be unreleased. Okay? So in this context, where it is here before a consonant. We have to put to check in here. Okay. Appear, repair. In both these words, P is between two vowels, but the next one, the second one, is stressed. In this context, P is going to be aspirated. So, this is aspiration here. Here, we have to, to put the check because it is between two vowels, and the next one is stressed. Now, operate Hippie happening. We notice P here 
is between two vowels but the next one the second one is not stressed this is the context this one is not stressed in this case how are we going to realize to pronounce uh, I mean p is it unaspirated is it aspirated is it unreleased we know it's going to be an unaspirated here okay so here we have finished the first exercise here now this the second part of it says in which context is stylistic variation allowed in which context is stylistic variation allowed that is in which environment does more than one allophone of p occur this type of variation is known as free variation note however that in other positions only one particular allophone may occur for example after s only an aspirated p is allowed here the allophones are said to be in complementary distribution let's go back I mean I think we have already is explained uh, complementary distribution and free variation on the hand that you have that you have already received no need to go back to it we have uh, explained this clearly through even examples now let's go back to our I mean uh, words here for example uh, in this case clap uh, I think uh, there is no harm if you pronounce it as being released to say clap or just clap and released so in this case I mean the, the rule which says that P is uh, is unreleased it's not obligatory it's just optional whether you pronounce it as released or unreleased it doesn't matter so here the two realizations are in free variation okay but if we have got p at the beginning p normally as a rule it should be aspirated now after s this p normally it is unaspirated but we cannot aspirate it there we cannot aspirate the p there in this context when it is after s which means that the aspirated one and the unaspirated one are in complementary distribution because they cannot be found in the same place okay now having done I mean the first exercise here let's please proceed with the second one one four now consider the allophones for the phonemes k and t the same thing that we did with p we are going to repeat it you know with k and t so we are going to have just another realization added number four here because we are talking about t this realization is the flap uh, you know that t can sometimes be pronounced as the in some phonetic environments so this is the symbol for it the represents a flap where the tongue tip rapidly strikes the alveolar ridge and we are going to see where we can pronounce T as a flap in these words here okay now uh, we have got two different phonemes here we have got K and T and uh, we are given some words from English and we are asked to find the right realization or the right allophone of them in the right phonetic environment where can we find K being unaspirated K aspirated K and released same thing in here t unreleased t aspirated t uh, t aspirated t unreleased and uh, the flap here and of course well, i mean having uh, uh, gone through the words having rearranged them in the same way we did for p in here we are going to find the rules we are going to find the right realizations and we are going to put the check in our chart in here for example where can we talk about k being unaspirated let's I mean rearrange the words in here I think your job has become clear now just follow the pattern that we have followed while working on the, f the first phoneme which is uh, p here 
of course uh, we are going to notice that k when it is initial here it's going to be aspirated this is what happens in the words like cat kiss uh, any other word no so these are the two words where k can be uh, aspirated because it is initial now let's talk about k being final where do we have it final here in these words we have got sac li so no need to say li k no need to, re to release the air just say sac li so in these two words it seems of course uh, it is final uh, it's not going to be released it's unreleased so we have to put the check in here now let's talk about k uh, after s where is it it's skin scar normally this k after s is not going to be uh, aspirated it's unaspirated here it's unaspirated so we have to put the check in here now uh, before a consonant well let's find k before a consonant in here where is it can we talk can we talk about k before a consonant here okay I need you to work with me on this uh, okay yes act tax in these two words k is before a consonant act tax so here the uh, k is unreleased act act we don't say act act ax tax so it's unreleased and at the same time we can say it's uh, unaspirated okay now let's talk about this context where k is between two vowels i think i need you to work with me on this in phonetic environment and find it and try to to, to find where k is found between two vowels but the, the next vowel is stressed let's do it here where here recover recover account account we have got k between two vowels but the next one is stress account here it, it's going to be aspirated so in this context k is going to be aspirated so we have to put the, the check in here now let's deal with the, the, the last phonetic environment this one let's I mean uh, find the examples of words where we have got k between two vowels but the, sec the second one is unstressed uh, let me just try to find this one in here so look we don't say package we say package so here k is between two vowels and the, the next vowel is not stressed this is the, the phonetic mark here it's not going to be aspirated here very simple so uh, once you finish th these phonetic environments for k you are going to find that we have got a similar pattern the same rules that we identified for the realizations of p also work for k okay now you're going to also to notice that w you are going to find uh, the same rules applying to t so this is problem one for b okay summarize the similarities and in, in the distribution of the allophones of p t and k now let me just talk about this realization because we have uh, skipped it here when can we talk about a t being pronounced as the as a flap uh, okay look at this word here this one uh, normally 
we can say water or according to some native speakers it's pronounced as water so here water this is pronounced as the as a flat because normally it is between two vowels and the next one is not stressed so in this context okay how are we going to pronounce I mean this uh, consonant or this sound this t is going to be pronounced as the in the in the last context when it is put between two vowels and the second vowel is unstressed this is it here okay now let me go back to this general question here summarize the similarities in the distribution of the allophones of p, t, and k. So these are the things that we are going to, uh, I mean, if you like, to answer in detail later on. But just, I mean, to have this, uh, I mean, lecture very, very brief, just to allow you to have easy access to it, we are going to stop here. And uh, the next time, we are going to, I mean, to talk very briefly about the, the full answer to it. Uh, and afterwards, we are going to deal with more exercises. Okay, thank you. I hope we are going to have another occasion to communicate with, uh, with each other, to uh, explain other notions in phonology and later on you know, in morphology.